and welcome. We are going to speak about clinical supply chain traceability. And I'm Francesco Spoto from Novartis, and I'm co-leading this use case together with Chad Sklodowski from Pfizer. We are going to drive you to the next slides by referring to the ASIS scenario and the current process that we are following in clinical supply. We are going to show you how the use case and our vision for the solution will pan out in the months and years to come. And then we're going to give you a breakdown of the value that blockchain solution will add to clinical supply chain stakeholders. Last but not least, we are going to link our effort with the effort that our other participants to the consortium are doing for the commercial supply chain. So let's give it a start. Here you can see in the top of the slide, the clinical supply chain process as it is now. We start from raw materials manufacturing, then we manufacture our primary product or drug product. The product gets then packed and labeled, goes into warehouse and gets distributed via logistics to our clinical sites, where finally the patients will get access to the, to the drug, to the investigational product. And of course, as you can imagine, this is a global process and we have many actors included in the process. So there are definitely certain areas that can be regarded as pain points. And we listed the four of them here, and I would like you to take a moment, go to Slido, and please rate them according to your experience. While you do it, I'll quickly go through them. So let's start from lack of real-time visibility. There is definitely one of the biggest areas of improvement that we have, because usually, the sponsor doesn't have access in real time to the data that are coming or are actually recorded and saved at clinical site level. So usually you only have access to the stakeholder that is next to you. This can create some issues and lagging in reaction time. The second one is also very relevant because when you do handoff of data, so when a process is based on the fact that multiple parties are editing or adding data to the data tracker, again, you have a limitation in improving the processes because you cannot rely on the accuracy of this data and congruency. The third very, very relevant for our organization that wants to become lean is that we spend a lot of effort and time in ensuring compliance towards regulatory requirements simply because, as I was mentioning before, we have only visibility one up and one down. So in order to look for data that is far from us, we have to spend a lot, a lot of energy doing so. And last but not least, empowering our patients. So being able to be closer to our patients and ensuring that they are treated the way they should be. And we can do that, but not by relying only on paper-based process or disrupted IT solution and landscape, but by integrating the process on a single source of truth that is shared across the participants. And that's exactly our vision. So we are imagining and we are working towards a future state where not only all the process steps are linked together on a common layer powered by blockchain, but also all the actors have access to all the relevant data points across the process and across the network. So we are definitely improving our process by reducing the time and effort to source and look for data. We are removing the majority of data inconsistencies in lays off, and we have potential for optimizing the clinical supply chain process by actually being able to integrate data that is ensured to be accurate across the participants. Definitely, we are looking at building more capabilities and better data identification and authorship, better data recording and sourcing, an easier reporting and analytics, and also getting ready for future needs. For instance, when we look at patient consumption, we can think of new treatment modalities such as autologous cell engine therapy or even a direct shipment to patients. Those things are very, very 
complicated and convoluted to be done with the current technologies. And we hope that our uh, solution together with the corresponding graphical user interface that can be done on mobile or a laptop with a single login can really help driving the adoption of it and creating value for all the stakeholders. And speaking about value, I would like to now hand over to Chad that will discuss how the solution will add value to each and every actor that is part of the process. Thank you. Chad, up to you. Thank you, Francesco. So now I'm gonna walk you through some of the value drivers of the proposed solution. As you can see, there are various actors involved in the clinical supply chain process. You have the pharmaceutical sponsors, the contract manufacturing organizations, the couriers, clinical sites, patients, and regulators, all of which stand to benefit in their own unique way. You look at the first one around creating trust between partners through the use of a common platform. This is, allows for increased transparency of the data amongst all of the actors and really all stand to benefit. A good example is now, uh, as Francesco alluded to earlier, the one up, one down, where I may only be able to see the next uh, handoff in the line, I can now see from a sponsor perspective, uh, managing those shipments all the way to the clinical sites and being able to connect those shipments with dispensing products to the patients. And if I'm a regulator, I can actually envision a world within Pharma Ledger where we have permission access to regulators so that they can monitor the compliance with these activities real time. And then one of the biggest benefits actually is for our clinical sites as well, where they would now be able to see what shipments are coming and when from which sponsors all through a single platform. So it really increases the ability to have a single shared understanding of where product is in its life cycle. The next benefit is around increased process efficiency by digitizing manual or paper-based processes, uh, all of which um, are tracked uh, a lot of times through uh, paper documents, can involve uh, many different document repositories, um, and tends to be very difficult to reconcile. So by putting it all in the blockchain, whether it's linking the documents from those document repositories or digitizing the data contained within those documents so it's more accessible and uh, can be uh, performed analytics, uh, that would increase the efficiencies for, for many of the different stakeholders involved. And then there's the value of interoperable data points to drive improved decision-making. One of the biggest benefits of this project is that it's driving more robust conversations around data standards so that we're all speaking the same language. We all have to meet the same regulations, but we may do it in a slightly different way. So this effort will help us align around the critical data elements that will simplify the process for all that are involved. And then there's the aspect of the immutable record keeping to reduce the burden of audits or inspections. For anyone who's ever been involved in an audit or regulatory inspection, you can empathize with how difficult it can be to piece together information from disparate systems and document repositories in order to demonstrate the integrity of the clinical trial to our regulators. And the cost of compliance can be significant from a resource perspective. And despite our best efforts, oftentimes data integrity continues to be a common finding. However, due to the immutable nature of the data on the blockchain, where a single actor cannot act unilaterally, we feel that Pharma Ledger will provide the improved data providence that is lacking today. The next one is around improved ability to track drug accountability. Although mo multiple stakeholders stand to benefit from this, the clinical sites have arguably the most to gain since this existing process often involves redundant tracking mechanisms that can involve many different systems, paper forms and processes to comply with each sponsor's requirements and often leads to human error. By standardizing this part of the process through Pharma Ledger, sites will be able to do this in a much more consistent and efficient way, thereby enabling sponsors to better track product reconciliation and improve product recall cycle times if and when needed. The next one's around reducing product waste by increasing end-to-end -end visibility. By having better insights into the real-time disposition of products, sponsors can make more informed decisions around how much overage or safety stock may be required to meet patient demand. And even a 1% improvement in this area could result in significant cost savings depending on the type of trial being conducted. And the last one around increasing trust in product quality for all, this applies to all actors. It really sums up all the other benefits that I've highlighted because it leads to having trust in the product 
that was manufactured according to good manufacturing practices, the quality was appropriately maintained throughout its life cycle, and that the right patient received the right product in the right condition. And all of this creates value for all the actors by developing trust, enhancing efficiencies, and eliminating key pain points to improve our ability to get critical medicines to patients around the world. Now, if you want to refer to the Slido and uh, please rank which of these value levers you feel is the most impactful for the proposed solution. So now that I've summarized the value drivers for the various clinical supply chain stakeholders, it's important to note that this is only for the development phase. This is really the, the very start of what will eventually become a approved commercialized product. And that's the connection that Pharma Ledger aims to uh, connect these important supply chains. So whereas the, the clinical supply space um, where we own the asset throughout its life cycle, we're looking to create a more efficient, compliant and patient centric process that helps us get innovative medicines to patients quicker. But the supply chain doesn't end there. You know, eventually those products get approved and we have to commercialize them, which requires massive scale up and having to track those finished goods through a whole different set of supply chain participants that have different incentives, different regulations, and frankly, patients have different expectations. However, by connecting these through uh, Pharma Ledger, we'll have a single trust-centered healthcare platform. So now with that, I will turn it over to Jan and Bernard, who will talk about finished goods traceability. Thank you. Um, so um, the first question, uh, which was uh, most popularly voted, is what's the status of the projects? When do they go live? And is this only for the EU market or uh, is it global? Um, <laughs> okay. The, uh, I mean, last part of that question, um, from the industry perspective, uh, definitely um, all of the uh, companies, the beneficiaries, members of the consortium are global players. The, um, their, their marketing products around the world. And as, as Jan presented in his presentation, these supply chains are quite complex and extend over multiple geographies. So the, the intention is that while these um, solutions um, are, are designed within the EU market, that they could potentially be scaled um, to other markets in the future. And of course, that's, that's really important for, for a blockchain solution because the real value comes from uh, scaling it to, uh, 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 you know, to a network. Um, and the more participants that um, are, are engaged in it, the, the more value that's created. In terms of the status, I mean, just to, to um, emphasize, Pharma Ledger is an innovation and research um, project. And it is, um, its, its stated intention is to do a reference implementation in a pre-productive environment. Um, that said, as, as Ken and Patrick mentioned with EPI, we've, we've also chosen to accelerate some of these projects uh, and to create a productive version um, well before the end of the project. So we are, we're hoping that we can meet and exceed the, the stated objectives of Pharma Ledger by creating solutions that can already create value um, as soon as possible. And, and so that's our, that's our intention. Um, and I think basically we, we intend to keep you updated on, on the status of this as we go, go forward through the regular newsletters um, or our, our pharmaledger.eu website. So I would, if you're not signed up for the newsletters, I, I think that's a great uh, way to, to stay abreast on what the current status uh, of the projects are. It's very dynamic. A lot of things are changing, of course, and, and that's where you can get the latest information. Super. Thanks, Dan. From Dejan, um, we're building a drug delivery system for HIV patients, and we need to track variables like temperature changes, store, storage. Is Pharma Ledger a good fit? Um, I'm sure who might pick that up. Uh, maybe Francesco or Chad from Clinical sure. Supply. Yeah, this is, this is Chad. Uh, yeah, I can I can tackle that one. 
so yeah, that is a part of the broader vision and it's a common issue that's faced across both the clinical and the, the commercial supply chains. And what we often see is that the current uh, state of affairs, generally speaking, is that the digital device that monitors the temperature is tracked in a separate system uh, or is still managed through paper PDF readouts of whatever those digital logs are. And it's not always connected directly to what's happening with the, the product in real time. So the idea, and there is another use case that will be presented at a follow-on uh, webinar that is looking at integrating IoT devices to Pharma Ledger and temperature monitoring being one of the obvious ones to, to point at. Uh, but the idea around the, uh, especially in the clinical supply space, is to have the information about the product flow with the product itself. So at any given moment, you would have the connectivity between that temperature monitoring information uh, with the actual physical location of the product throughout its life cycle, all the way up until the point at which it's dispensed to the patient. And then a direct to patient scenario, even continuing on to their home potentially. So yes, it is a part of the vision. It is something we see as a huge value driver and uh, it's gonna be um, hopefully the, the, next, uh, the next innovation in this space. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, our next question is, uh, is quite a, a wide one. Um, what is the greatest benefit of blockchain to a regulatory agency? Um, I'm not sure who wants to pick this one up. Or well, maybe a couple of you could. Hi, this is, uh, this is Chad. Hi, this is, uh, this is Chad. Oop, I'm sorry, am I echoing? Okay. Yeah, we sorry. can hear you, Chad. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I would say <clears throat> in the clinical supply space, I think um, it, it, you know, we can imagine a world where the regulators could actually monitor the uh, integrity of our trial real time. Um, audits and inspections are very labor intensive, not just for the sponsors, but also for regulators. Um, so giving them some sort of a permission to access to the necessary information that they would normally audit um, and to digitize some of the data that's buried in paper documents that are difficult to reconcile should increase the speed and efficiency of which they can uh, authenticate that we've conducted conducted the trial uh, with integrity. So that that's one area that we've identified, at least in our use case, as a, a big benefit to regulators. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question um, from Georgios is there is any use case about temperature compliance until the endpoint or the patient uh, being investigated? Yeah, this is Chad again. I think that yes. leads to my earlier point around, um, you know, what, what we're looking to do in the, the clinical supply space. Uh, and, and I would say right now the vision is probably to, um, to the point of which we've dispensed the product to the patient. Um, monitoring, patient monitoring temperature at a patient home might be beyond the scope initially. Um, but, uh, but for now, yes, uh, temperature monitoring is, is definitely in scope and you can get better analytics around total time out of environment. So from warehousing uh, to distribution, uh, logistics, all the way to the clinical site um, is definitely in scope for what we're looking to, to tackle as a part of our vision. Super, thank you. Uh, I'm very conscious of the time, so I'm, I'm gonna just um, tackle one last question. Um, any questions that, uh, haven't, that aren't gonna be answered here live, we will endeavor to uh, answer them um, via a blog post uh, on our website uh, and through our newsletters as well. So we'll, we'll try to make sure that there's answers for, for all of your questions. So the last question, uh, it's, it's sort of a, quite a wide one. Uh, who's the owner of the blockchain uh, in the Pharma Ledger project? The uh, Pharma Ledger project, Daniel, just to answer that is the, um, has a governance work package which is currently evaluating different governance models. We know that some entity or some consortium has to um, support and operate or you know, the, the, the solution or the platform beyond the life of the project. So that, that's part of the project that's in it and, and the, and, um, and the uh, evaluation of the governance models is currently ongoing. The recommendation for that will happen in the near future. Okay, super, thank you. 
Okay, I think we've uh, we've taken uh, all the questions we can in the time that we have available. Like I say, we'll, we'll try and uh, endeavour to answer the others via the website and blog posts. Um, so it remains for me to say thank you to all of our speakers uh, for their excellent presentations today. Uh, I'd also like to thank everyone uh, involved in the production of the webinar today. And uh, I'd especially like to thank you, the audience, for your um, attendance and your participation today. Um, um, the recording of this event will be available uh, via the um, Farmer Ledger website um, very soon after. And as um, uh, Dan encouraged you earlier, if you're not already signed up to the newsletters, then we'd encourage you to do that and you can visit the Farmer Ledger website to find the link to do that. Um, our next webinar is planned to be in February, early February of next year. And we look forward to seeing you all then. But uh, for now, thank you for your participation. Have a great day.